Today on Toy Geeks, we're going to share our predictions for the upcoming and first ever Hasbro PulseCon. And we're also going to talk about some of the leaked information for not only the new Masters of the Universe Origins line, but also the upcoming Masters of the Universe Masterverse toy line. All that and more today on Toy Geeks. Everybody and welcome to Toy Geeks. My name is Jay and with me as always is John. John, how you doing? Doing fantastic. How are you, Jay? Excited to be here today because not only did my favorite team of all time uh, go to clinch a postseason berth for the first time in 14 years, but we have the first ever Hasbro PulseCon happening uh, less than a week. Less than a week. The events will start on Tuesday, yeah. apparently. And uh, a whole bunch of stuff. They've pulled out all the stops. This week um, is going to go fly by. I mean, they got they got Tenacious D, one of my favorite yeah. bands of all time. They got what? Uh, Fall Out Boy too. Fall Out Boy, and then another person. I don't know. Who they are. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> but two out of three. I mean, that's John Cena, uh, uh, Ernie Hudson. Oh, yeah, Ernie Hudson too. That's right. I, and um, uh, who else is there? Um, Jason Reitman. Uh, I mean, just a whole bunch of people. Yeah, somebody on the D and D too. Oh yeah, um, um, uh, what's his name? John Magliano or something like uh, that. Joe Joe Magliano. Is that his name? Joe Magliano. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, I knew him from what was that vampire show? Um, True Blood. True Blood. Thank you. Wasn't he like the werewolf in that or something? I, I've never seen a minute of it. I just oh, know he was in a minute. And I, 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 it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they are stacking their decks at Hasbro. <laughs> Seriously. Like, this thing is like a legit convention. Um, so kudos to them. Uh, really excited about it. Really excited to see, uh, you know, what they show us, what they're going to bring. Because, dang, it is uh, It's, it's going <laughs> to be a really fun a uh, week of uh, action figure and toy geekery and uh, toy geeks will will be here to talk about it. So uh, as promised, today is our uh, predictions episode. Uh, we do have some non Hasbro things to kind of hit on the top of the hour, uh, but the bulk of this will uh, dig into uh, what we think is going to drop. Also just talking about it in general. So really excited about that. And then uh, we'll have two special episodes of toy geeks next week instead of one. So we'll have one on Saturday night uh, on the 25th, as well as the 26th. So nine o'clock, both nights, uh, we will be here talking about Hasbro PulseCon. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, you, if you're listening at home because of the, as you've heard it through the podcast, come join us live for these ones. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, and uh, But if not, you can still listen on our podcast channel. Uh, but again, uh, 9 o'clock Saturday and Sunday, the 25th and the 26th on YouTube.com slash Dad Life. Let's check the chat. We got Mark44 Prime. Sup, guys? How's it going, What's Mark? Up, Mark? Nice to have you here. I think this is the first time uh, commenting on the show, at least. Good to see you. Uh, old School old School is in the house. Yo, Joe. I, I mean, yo, Jay and John. <laughs> uh, Master Hoarder. Uh, good to see you. Evening, evening. Uh, Mariano shook home. What's Dude, up? And the tortillas. Nope. <laughs> no. Still Pete nothing. Dubs. What's Dubs up, Pete? Uh, let's see. Old school says hi to the chat. KJ Smith, sup, peeps? How's it going, KJ? And uh, yeah, very, very excited. Uh, so let's uh, let's first things first. We'll we'll do a we'll do a quick uh, recent toy hauls, and uh, you know I'll uh, do, should, I'm gonna kick mine off. Okay. Because it also give me a second to upload the picture of yours. All but, right. Um, <laughs> I I got a few things this week, and I I didn't have because I just got them today actually like right before jumping in and watching the Padre game. I stopped by our local toy show that actually happened this weekend and picked up. Uh, a bunch of the Rebels Star Wars Black Series figures from a mutual friend James, as well as Shannon, um, and, and a few other things uh, from there. But uh, the main thing that came in this week, and I did a review of it already, was my Masters of the Universe Origin Scare Glow. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Um, if you haven't seen the review, 
go see the review. Uh, one, it's up there on the Geek Dad Life. But this thing is freaking cool. Uh, and you know, when looking at the uh, the, the images from Toy Fair uh, in February, as well as a lot of the promotional pictures, it didn't look like a glow in the dark figure. It was like mm-hmm. a did you know regular plastic figure. So the concern was, you know, is it is it gonna be like the is it gonna be like the old toy? Well, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, he's freaking awesome. If you've seen the video, this dude really glows. Like he is one of the most glow in the dark, glow yeah. in the dark figures I've ever had. Like this thing, <laughs> I don't need a light in here anymore. I can just you know turn just off, put them in the middle of the room. Yeah, and this thing, this thing will light it up. Um, <laughs> It is so cool. I'm just really loving this thing. Uh, John, did, did you see my uh, review of this video yet? I, I have not. I haven't yet. Uh, it it turned out really, really nice. Really um, excited uh, to, one, pick it up so early. Uh, this was a European release. Uh, so uh, uh, it's it didn't have this normal card back. It had kind of the multi-language card back, which yep. they talked about. Uh, at this is the the video or the little uh, uh, what you call it, thumbnail, um, but uh, yeah, it just it's so stinking cool. And this is a picture I took of it like when I first wow. came out of the packaging, uh, like literally, it's That's crazy. Bad. That is insane. Yeah, yeah this thing is <laughs> woo, nuts. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely like tops of my toy haul. Uh, lately, and then also, I think from the last time we uh, recorded, uh, posted up, finally did the, that review of this yep. new Super Van City uh, for Micro Machines. But yeah, that was uh, this is tops, tops of the pops. And uh, you know, it was a, it, I, I bought it on eBay. You know, I broke the rule. I've said it before. Mm-hmm. I do it sometimes. But at least this one it also came with the Undertaker uh, figure, which nice. is glow in the dark. Um, so it was like a two pack, and. Uh, this one, I don't know what it's same company. This mm-hmm. one barely glows in the dark. Like it, it's under black light, it's pretty cool. But the glow in the dark feature here stinks. And this one's amazing. So uh same company, probably same team. They're like it's the same tooling. So yeah. just something of note. If you're Maybe playing you got glow. extra special glow in yours. It's like a chase variant. It, it glows a few <laughs> it, it glows a few lumens brighter. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I hope not because I hope everybody that gets this figure it's going to be just as obnoxiously uh, bright as <laughs> as this one because did, did the mini is- comic have uh, text in it it did not so the uh, European version of the mini oh I have it right here perfect uh, does not and I forgot to talk about that in the review um, but it does not have any uh, text in it it's just the artwork looks good though yeah no it looks great uh, there's a scare glow. He looks pretty cool, hmm. but yeah, uh, the, no text in there. So I don't fully know the story, but it's pretty simple. You know, all basically it features all the new characters that are in uh, this upcoming wave uh, with scare glow, Orko, uh, Manny faces and trap jaw. Uh, so it features them uh, as well as Skeletor and he man. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty exciting. Uh, none of hit stateside yet. So this was a European figure. A lot of people asked in the comment section, how did you get it? Did you find a sort? No, this is not a, this was not a U.S. retail release yet. It's only hit in Europe so far that I've seen. Um, and uh, we have not seen them truly hit stateside yet, even though like pre-orders opened up on these on Amazon. So the exclusivity of Motu Origins is already done even before the end of 2020 uh, with this wave and a few from the first wave hitting Um Amazon instead of just Walmart. So that's a good thing. I think we were all kind of ticked at yeah. the, it being Walmart exclusive. So open it up to more people. Um, <laughs> going back uh, to the chat real quick. Uh, Skeletor's ghost. That's a great figure. I agree. Uh, that's kind of a new explanation. Like great Scott Skeletor's ghost. I like it. <laughs> Nobody. Really uh, that glow is freaking awesome. Yeah, man. This is again. I've had many glow in the dark figures. This is the best glow in the dark figure in terms of just glowing in the dark I've ever had. Uh, <laughs> says that's because the Undertaker <laughs> stinks in reference to the Undertaker figure not being as good of a glow in the dark figure. Uh, and will you guys be picking up those Motu minis? Uh, that's from PD Dubs. Uh, I have not even seen them yet. Have you seen yeah. them at your Walmart? Nope. Nothing. Nothing at all. 
I, I thought maybe if I find one, you know, if yep. it's, I'll, I might pick up a couple just at random, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really want to look at the, at the code. Yep. Me, you know, I, I'm that, not, true. I don't know the codes by heart, you know, by the character, mm-hmm. but I would look and make sure I'm not getting the same character. Yeah, exactly. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look it up on my phone. I'd like to just grab a couple, you know, and see what's in there. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, same here. So if I if I see them, if they if they show up in the wild when I am there, then absolutely, I'll probably get a couple. Um, yeah. And and my buddy, uh, friends with for a long time, named Caesar. Uh, he's a big uh, He Man fan as well. He's found them and he's bought a few of them. They look awesome. So I, I've seen friends get them. I just haven't found them myself. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marino shares his hauls for the week. Uh, the, the Vintage Collection Clone Wars Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker. Transformer WFC hubcap, two BB droids, an astromech, uh, WFC airwave, and Super Mario 3D All Stars. Uh, I'm is that the is that is that the game that new Super Mario game looks really cool? Has like all the the old games. Yeah, um, I believe uh, my wife is bringing me a water, but luckily she's worried about being on screen. But I think the camera shot is so tight. <laughs> you will not see you, Colleen. You just hand me the cup. You won't be. You won't be. There you go. All right. See. It was a successful transfer. It was a tight enough shot to where she wouldn't be on screen. If I did this shot, she would have been seen, but I I, I spared her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Zoics, Mariano. That's quite a haul. That's a really good haul, Mariano. Nicely it is. done. Nicely done. Um, PD Dubs, I have one, and I got the Sake Mountain display box, too. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Um, picked it up after your scare glow review. Uh, so I, yeah, I think PD Dubs commented on that video. Uh, I think he's only gonna get a few, but now he's like, I, I may have sent PD Dubs down a dark path of <laughs> similar to GI Joe, where yeah, we bought a whole bunch. So I'm sorry, PD Dubs. That's on me. That's on me. Uh, you you missed it, uh, John. On uh, I rebranded the other live show that he called uh, Geek Dad Live to Screen Geeks to kind of pair with Toy Geeks. But anyway, yeah. we're talking about how I pre-ordered the Baby Yoda uh, screen accurate size Baby Yoda. Yep. And my wife was in the chat, and somebody asked like how much it was. I was like, oh, I'm not going to say because Colleen's watching this. And then somebody in the chat dropped the retail price. Uh oh. Uh oh. Making on his name. I think it was Eddie Eddie Aguilar. Anyways, uh I was like, come on. And he apologized, but still, it's uh, that's the toy collector code. Yes. You don't let the significant you, you, yeah. you can't let that sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh I got the three uh uh three quarter scale of the child fig. So it's like this big, three and three quarter? <laughs> like a, yeah, like, that's like a it's like a thimble. Smaller <laughs> than a thimble. Yeah. Three and quarter. Uh, Eddie, Eddie, money. <laughs> That's you sold me out. Uh, Eddie, money. Uh, anyway, all right, all right. Your hauls. What do you got? All right. Um. So this week I got a big collection of DC Classics figures. The Mattel so this big DC big Universe Classics. Yeah, I got about seventy-five of them. Wow, look at all those Batmans. Yeah. I tried to organize the pictures into sort of factions. Mm-hmm. So there's the Batman one, the DC, um, yeah, DC, obviously, but all, all the lanterns and then Superman mm-hmm. in the back with Parasite and then a Bizarro and mm-hmm. Commandi snuck in there. And then there's the other pictures. I don't know if you got those uploaded, um, the, uh, the rest of them. Oh, that's the only picture I got. Did you send me more? Oh, really? Yeah, I sent you oh, two no. of those. Doubles. Uh, okay, my soul only this is the only one I got. This is the only one I got oh. sent to you. So I That's all right. That's all right. There was um just a whole mess of DC Universe Classics figures. Um from the first wave on, the only two builder figures were um Imperiex and Metamorpho. But out of all of it, oh, I love there was Meta- only like two or three figures that were incomplete. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, they didn't come necessarily packed with a bunch of uh accessories. Mm-hmm. Um but those those are not for keeping. Those are going into the inventory. Those are for selling. Right back out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably keep a couple Batmans, mm-hmm. but that's about it. And then for the the other haul I got, I got some Mythic Legions. Ooh, hold on me. Yeah, pull this out here so you can show it off. Oh, I thought you're I thought you were taking it out here. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, oh perfect. Ah. Oh man, Raygor, the uh, the homage to War Duke. Oh, this dude. figure is awesome. 
That is amazing. Awesome. Wow. Look at this that. is like this is like one of the holy grails now for for Mythic Legions figures and collectors. You can see why. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it skyrocketed in value like crazy. I can't I can't believe how much it went up. What, do you mind sharing what it's retailing for right now? Um, if you get it in the package, it's like two fifty. Yeah. Um, loose is. I mean, loose is still going for like two twenty five. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, for a figure that like retailed for forty bucks, I think they were forty bucks or thirty five yeah. um, when you pre ordered it. So I got I got Ragor there. I got the original first version of the Bar Barbarian Builder mm -hmm. pack. And that was a, wow. a set that came with like multiple heads, mm -hmm. um, multiple loincloths, different weapons, you know, um, the, the head attachments on the side mm -hmm. here. Yep. It would come with like antlers or wings or um, the, the same sort of ones that that Rhaegor came with the wings that yep. attached to the helmet. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a Viking helmet with, without a beard. I mean, this set was like super loaded with, with accessories and yeah. things to switch it up with. And then the last one I got was <clears throat> Atlas the Conqueror. That guy right there. Ah, oh, dude. And that, these guys are amazing. Gosh. It's it's a great series. It's it's you know, I would say I, would you say it's a cult, maybe a cult classic? You know, it's not it maybe not as mainstream, but it's pretty well known, I think, within yeah. more intense collectors. But gosh, that is so cool. Yeah, when when the um when the horseman put up like the second Kickstarter for these, mm -hmm. it was the highest grossing Kickstarter for a toy that that had ever been up that ever successfully won on Kickstarter. Yep. Because the 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 goal was only like seventy five thousand dollars or something to make that second wave. Mm -hmm. And it went to almost a million dollars. Wow. It was like nine hundred and eighty something, you know? It was unbelievable. That's crazy. But if you haven't got into Mythic Legions, it's it's so versatile. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can you can completely pop the figure apart. The mm -hmm. torso will separate from the the the, the crotch, so mm -hmm. you can add different loincloths. You can pop, you know, like a a shirtless torso yeah. onto you know different legs. The whole thing comes apart without you know damage. It doesn't really loosen up the joints from taking it apart so many times. But the only the only you know thing with getting into Mythic Legions is you have to pre-order everything. And once mm -hmm. once you pre-order it, you really don't get it for you know like a year. Yep. So similar to Super Seven kind of. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But the detail is unreal. Oh, looks incredible. Looks incredible. Uh two to three hundred bucks. Still have uh L his LJ and uh, old school shinobi. Uh, has his LJ and Warduke. I have one as well. It's one of the greatest 80s figures of all time, or coolest. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, those are unbelievable. What's the articulation like? My Mariana Chacon says, Oh, it's um, really, it's the uh, so like the the feet here, mm -hmm. so the feet are swivel side to side, oh. front and back, and then um, turn 360 what? all the way around. Yeah, That's crazy. And it's like that pretty much with every joint. It's like, it's like joints on joints on joints. Joints on joints on joints. Yeah, but the way that they assemble it, it's everything is really well hidden. Mm hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Um. All right. Well, there's our hauls. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did get a GI Joe classified gung ho. Nice. Pop up and Co uh, and Cobra Commander. Uh, and then I picked up the. What's that? Gary's mom get that for you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gary's mom. <laughs> and uh, the Motu Origins, Beastman, Evelyn, and Tila, I finally got. So I just need Man at Arms. All right. Thank you, again to, thank you again to Gary for, <laughs> for all of that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's. See. I still got to get both of you your, uh, your Baronesses oh, yeah. in my uh, closet over here. All right. Uh, let's save the Motu Origins for the end. We'll probably save that. Uh, for the last 10, 15 minutes of the show, just in case maybe you want to avoid spoilers, even though I put it in the opening video. So sorry yeah. about that. Uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll save that for the end. Well, let's get into the meat and potatoes of why we're here today. As Giraffe named Gerald said, I can't wait for HasbroCon 2020. Uh, so let's jump into that. Uh, you know, so I thought uh, we would do today 
uh, is kind of just run through one, what the, the events, the agenda is going to be. Um, I did hopefully the screen sharing uh, option works here. Um, so let's let's hope and, and pray how it works. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Has Ross follow these steps? Oh Lord. Um, ensure your check checked. All right. Uh, 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 talk about something, John. All right. All quick. right. So, <laughs> predictions. Are we going to break it down by by series? I think we should. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think that's the way to do it. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence on a lot of stuff because of what's already been done with mm -hmm. with Haslab and um and Hascon uh, so far of what they've announced. And maybe the stuff they've already announced, and then you know, so at least we know what's already out there, and then it'll kind of leave us for like, okay, what what's left for us to to dig into? Yeah, so the the stuff that's already announced for Hascon, um, for the exclusives, mm -hmm. is the um, the Ghostbusters uh, set with um, is it Lewis Tully? Yep, and um, the Terror Dog two pack, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're getting the Cobra Commander. It's like yep. the uh, Snake Supreme or Serpent Supreme Cobra Commander set, and we're getting that uh, really cool. Uh, Star Wars Black Series, um, the Endor pack, and I don't know if anybody's seen the actual packaging oh, God, the yet. It's amazing, but the way that they they like laid out the speeder, it, you it looks like the it looks like the forest is actually like it's it's mm -hmm. in motion. Yes, and and it's a it's sort of um like the the package is is square as it's folded, but when you unfold it, it's like a triangle uh, in the center and the the sides fold out it's it's really incredible the way that hasbro has assembled this package and i think that's that's probably why the the price point is what it is mm -hmm. because the the speeder is a it's a repack essentially yep um and then you're getting han right in front of the rebel bunker or the the like the transmission station bunker, yep. whatever that was. Yep. yep. And then who else is in there? Is it Leia with uh, the poncho? Yep. Yeah. It it looks so freaking good. Oh, I'm, I think I've got it now to where I can share my screen, which will be good. There we go. All right. Ooh, there oh. it is. Fancy pantsy. All right. Here we go. Uh, so, uh, yes. Let's see. Do they have the link to the exclusives? We can kind of just uh, glance through that. Um. Yeah. Anyway, exclusives. Well, actually, here we go. Hasbro Pulse exclusives. Uh, oh, oh no! Yeah. On exclusives. That's right. I forgot they're re-releasing the uh, Volcanics Volcanicus uh, Dinobot com um, combiner through the Generation Select Takara series. Wow. I mean, the first one was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Once it's assembled, but it's a little, it's still a little wonky. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. All right. So uh, at, on September 12th, 12 p.m., we're getting the Hasbro Pulse Con Sneak Pink. And then for Hasbro Pulse Premiums, 12 p.m. on the 23rd Wednesday, we can uh, order um, and then uh, for everybody else on September 24th. Now, if they're doing limit one per customer, do you think they're going to leave enough uh, for everybody? Like, uh, no, we'll come back. No. You think so? If they sell out on Wednesday, the premium people, it's not going to be there on Thursday. Yeah, I have a, I have a feeling it's going to be like a, it's, it's going to be a lot of hurt feelings. Ooh, God, that <laughs> happens. I. I'm gonna take counterpoint here. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I'm gonna just hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> if everything sells out, oh man. Um, although you you've had the experience of of getting uh, San Diego stuff from Hasbro, mm -hmm. and it's always been okay, right? Yeah. So they stagger it. So you know they'll sell out. Uh, you know, actually, no. I think once they sell out, they sell out. They don't cap it per day. 
but they do cap the how many people can get into the line and now it's like right. uh, randomized so you have uh, it's a lottery to even get a ticket to get in line to buy some mm -hmm. um so some of the other ones like NECA and uh, Mattel, they'll hit a cap out on Dayton and just stop selling them and bring more tomorrow. But usually Hasbro will have most of everything uh, preview night, Thursday, even into Friday, this will have most of the stuff. And then maybe like midday Friday, that's when some of the things will start selling out. And then by Saturday, the things that are really hot are just sold out. And then you can just like walk into the, to the Hasbro booth and buy stuff. But it's usually what's left over. Um, but there's still usually maybe at least 50 to 70% of the stuff that's left. So there's still mm -hmm. a good amount, just usually not the things that are super hot that are selling like crazy. Yeah. Um, and then by Sunday, which is the last day of San Diego Comic Con, there'll be a, maybe like 30% of the stuff left. So um, I think they're going to hold back. I, if they sold everything to just the premium people on the Wednesday, they would be riding in the streets. Riding. <laughs> in maybe like a 50 50 you know 50 percent they'll they'll put aside and once that sells out it's done and mm -hmm. then the rest rest up on sale for for the general yep i i hope so. i i think they got to hold some back because again there would be riots if they didn't uh ben north mass waiting coming for ghostbusters we'll get into that i believe ghostbusters is on the saturday i'm sorry sunday uh that panel uh, Rob uh ghostbusters is saturday is it saturday yeah because the the panels are friday and saturday Oh, am I messing that up? I thought it yeah. was Saturday, Sunday. Well, I'm fairly certain it's... It's the 25th and uh, 26th, right? Yeah, 25th and 26th is Friday, Saturday. Scratch that. We're doing the show on Friday and Saturday. I think I messed up the beginning of the show. Friday, Saturday. On Saturday. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, 24th. Okay. Um, so let's go into day one, which is the Friday starting at 11 a.m., uh, do we, uh, I used to be way into magic, but I stopped. Does anybody care about magic? I got nothing. Do you have anything? Uh, nope. I, uh, I know it's cards. That's, that's most I know about it. Great game. MTG is a great game, but it's really expensive to like play modern, uh, master of the gathering. Um, so, and honestly, the exclusives at, at Hasbro for Master uh, um, Magic of the Gathering are usually some of the most expensive things. Um, the first year I got two of those uh, cards. That's the first time they did the exclusive cards. Oh, man, I, I, I near made my trip. I think I sold them for like a thousand bucks. Wow. Uh, it was quick and easy money. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, special episode of Dragon Talk, the official Dungeons and Dragons pos podcast. Um, With Matthew Lillard, another celeb. I mean, I guess celebrities don't have anything better to do, right? So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, they, they, you know, there's not a lot of production going on. <laughs> uh, nothing really on the toes side of the uh, toys side for that, though, right? No, no, I don't think Hasbro has any licensing for toys for for D and D. And then uh, we got another D and D thing with Joe Manganiello and Kyle Newman. <laughs> <laughs> um on how to be a great dungeon man master that's cool i uh i don't i mean nothing against it i just don't have time to do D, &D. Uh, but i do have some friends that uh, do it and i've have played from time to time all right probably the first big uh panel of the day would be the hasbro star wars panel and then there's a Haslab panel right after so uh starting with the uh star wars brand team uh, we're going to talk about Lucasfilm product development uh, as they says proper uh, Hasbro Star Wars line, including Black Series, Vintage Collection, and at times we'll get end up look at Hasbro's latest action figure and premium role play offerings uh, from throughout the saga. Word on the Hollow Net is there may be a few surprises. This is the way. So to me, that's saying we're going to be Mando heavy, yep. right? Yep, absolutely. Um, so. What are, okay, what's what's your what's your Star Wars prediction? Is there it there's a Haslab after, so we'll save the okay. Haslab prediction because they haven't officially uh, said what it's going to be, right? No, they haven't. Okay. It's just it's, it's coming. regular Star Wars stuff. Um, Mando heavy. It's going to be um a, a four inch scale version of his ship, I think. Okay, in, in a vintage collection box. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's a really good prediction. <clears throat> 
Um, cause we haven't gotten a vehicle yet. Um, and it's, it's small enough that in this modern era of vehicles being expensive to make, they could do it. Yeah. It, it, I'm sure it won't be exact, but they, they interpret them well enough. Like they've done with the slave ones. And so you're thinking, uh, it's, is it called a Falcon crest No, or something. Anyways, um, do you razor crest razor crest? I think that's right. Do you think it'll be, you're saying four inch scale, not black series scale. Right. I think it'll be four inch scale. Uh, it's a it's a little bit more feasible, I think. Uh, I agree. I, I think that's probably the better way to go to go about it, because um, a black series one would probably be the same price as a a BMF, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to guess a uh, a four inch scale version is going to be about 150 dollars. You think so? Yeah, because I th I think that's what the most recent um, Slave One was was a, around 150. Okay. Well, the slave one was that. That's how much this one's going to be. Yeah. Um. What do you right. What do you got? You what you, do you think? vehicle. You went vehicle. Um. And it's not it's not 2023. So we got no Return of the Jedi, 2021, no Empire. So really, it's just I. It is kind of just the Mandalorian. Yeah. But I'm gonna go. I'm going to go, I'm going to uh, zig instead of zagging. Uh, I'm going to say we're getting some rebels or clone wars type stuff because it seems to me that Mandalorian season two is going to really expand the TV universe. If mm -hmm. we're getting an Ahsoka appearance with Rosario Dawson, all that kind of stuff. So I feel like we're going to be getting something. Captain Rex, Ahsoka, uh, uh, Boz Katan, like a lot of these, um, characters that are from clone wars and rebels getting brought into this season two of Mandalorian to assumably expand the universe. And I think they've been kind of planting the seeds for that. We got the dark saber role kid role play toy uh, for the first time. So to coincide with that, I think we're getting a black series, uh, dark saber, uh, instead of the, the cheapo one. I think that's going to be oh. the premium, uh, uh, role play toy. That they might unveil. That's a Those good are my one. predictions. That's a good one. All right. Yeah, because I I don't think they'll they'll tease too much to give away anything from Mando season two. True. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like maybe they go the Clone Wars appearance or whatever version. Just you know, like because they can't say what it is, but mm, there's a little little sprinkle of a tea. But they're talking <laughs> about it. Uh, I said Falcon Crest, uh, old school Shinobi. Falcon Crest, uh, that was a spinoff of Dynasty in the 80s. Yeah, sorry about that one. Mayor uh, <laughs> Shagone, yes, Slave One was 150. That's not too bad. Uh, I doubt I'll be able to get it on sale, um, I guess. But it's like, I mean, remember when a Slave One was $25? <laughs> That's what I feel like there. Uh, uh, TVC figures, you know, I, I love the vintage collection. I, I think ideally three and three quarters is the ultimate uh, star, even though I think yeah. the black series is great, but they haven't been very heavy in it lately. So I would say don't hold your breath for heavy TVC. That's all I would say. But yeah, I, I, I think, I think they're running out of, you know, running out of options. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let, let's move along here. Uh, has lab. It's already been teased. We're getting another HasLab project. We had the first one was the sail barge. Then we got the uh, um, what's his name Unicron. I uh, yep. also had another one that didn't make it. The Cookie Monster. Yeah, the Cookie uh, Monster. Uh, I really dug it. I I would have I would have put money into that one um, because I, I saw it at Comic Con that year as well, and I thought it was really cool. Uh, but again, I guess not as many people need like a life size <laughs> Cookie Monster. Uh, replica. <laughs> but if it was if it was Gonzo, I would have been there 100. percent Gonzo or yeah. Grover, those those two are my my guys. I think if I think if it was Gonzo, it would have been backed, no right? problem. Exactly. Like yeah. I don't know why I don't go Gonzo there. Uh, I know actually that might be because isn't Sesame Workshop is actually separate from the Muppets now. But anyway, yeah, that's just my thoughts. Uh, so we're coming back to the Star Wars, uh, and they're talking here about the sail barge. Join members of Hasbro Marketing and design teams as they reveal the next Star Wars HasLab Vintage Collection Dream Project. 
what I would preface by saying they would have to go somewhere we've never gone before. Yeah. So wh where do you where do you think they're going to go? OK, well, last last time we talked about this, I thought about a a better scaled Imperial shuttle. But yeah. then I thought um, maybe not. I thought maybe more. um maybe more playset again you know because the the sail barge is it's a vehicle but it's also a playset yeah so so i think um i really don't think that they're gonna go um sequel trilogy mm -hmm. i don't think they'll go original trilogy i think they're gonna go prequel trilogy and do uh, see <laughs> I got two. I got two. Okay. You can give so, e so, two. so either one and then uh, like your most. Yeah. You most so likely. I thought my, my most likely is an mm -hmm. original trilogy playset, um, a some sort of Star Destroyer playset. Okay. But, you know, in a good scale, or maybe not Star Destroyer, but a um, um, Death Star, one or the other. Okay. It's a, a good playset, you know, that mm -hmm. just, it's, it's going to be, you know, like the, the sail barge, with, you know, it's a good playset. You know, just a display. Yeah. Uh, my other is the uh, Royal Starship from Episode One. I that was mine, so that's fine. You took it. But yeah, the the the, the newbie, Nubian Nabooian. Uh, it's the. I thought it was just just the Naboo Royal Starship. Yeah, but I know, like, what do they call themselves? The it would be Nabooian. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Nubian credits. They're no good here. <laughs> Correct us if we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of, it'd be really cool if they did another one of those. Cause it's, it's one of the great ships of all time. Yeah. It's one of the and, few prequel ships. That's like still worth tons of money. Yeah. It, it's held up real well. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to try and get one buy it complete, cause otherwise it's a pain in the neck to try and buy the parts. Yeah. Yep. And it, it's still cool. You know, it, it, it does make a good play set. Mm hmm. So yeah. that's that'd be cool. That'd be great. I think this the Super Star Destroyer playset's great. My other thought is what my uh, Mariner picks, so I, I won't pick his as well. But a uh, modular Death Star playset. Oh wow, that'd be good, right? Because uh, it's really we haven't had a true blue Death Star playset since the first one. Yeah, which is also the first ever. Um, like three and three quarter inch scale playset, right? Or the first, I mean, I, that's kind of like if you think about it, it's the first modern playset, or at least of the the eighties. Hate it was even though it was a seventy nine, but still, it's like that's kind of like I don't know. I would say that's the the one they all evolved from, right? Yeah. Cap door, yeah. uh, I don't know, some type of elevator, <laughs> gun, yeah. the trash compactor, trash compact, like so much. Mm -hmm. And if they, if they did a new one. They need to put some sort of foam like yes. in the trash compactor for like, you know, like a throwback. Um, yeah, because it again, it had all the elements that so many play, even, you know, like Gray Skull, uh, the I don't know, there's so many, uh, the Fortress of Fangs, but yeah, trapdoor, prison, elevator, uh, gun action mm -hmm. different levels. Like it's like the recipe for a playset. <laughs> exactly. That was it. That's yep. the one that started it all. But okay, so if I can't go there, I'm not gonna be going to the chat now. So if I'm picking one, I am sorry. But uh, let's see. They, I, they're kind of saying they did Cloud City with that kind of uh, crappy yeah, the, thing. Yeah. But that's I think that was a, that's lame. It's super lame. That shouldn't count because I would still like to see a proper Cloud City deal. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go basically the only big original place that that now see they have I would say they have to have never done like the sail barge they never did the sail barge before. Mm -hmm. What's left that uh, like the sail barge that they've never done before? The a recreation of the Senate. <laughs> 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 I mean the uh you know that rebel transport uh the vintage one which was just the you know the figure carry case yeah but that I'm, would be okay. that would be super lame I'm gonna lazy pick I'm just gonna say another like indoor playset oh right uh what a new Ewok village new Ewok village yeah that would be that would be awesome 
They could they could knock it out of the park. They really could. Yeah. But I, they might save that for like a like again 2023 the yeah. 30th anniversary of uh, return. But that's my pick because everybody else already picked the ones that I probably would have picked first. Uh, <laughs> going to the chat, Brad Brooks. I'm gonna need a three and three quarter inch moff getting with dark saber. I agree. They're good. They gotta. If mm-hmm. if they said this is the way, I think they're going heavy on Mandalorian. Yeah. It's the only like new property, live action property they got to do right now. Uh, old school Shinobi, they're going to do Dex's Diner from Attack of the Clones. Old school's got, old school's got it. That's it. That's going to be it. Uh, I, Mariano, I might get the new Blue Royal Starship if they actually chrome it out. Oh, man. True chrome to that one. Woo. Ooh, that'd be nice. Woo. Fingerprints for days. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh pd devs or would it turn into like the old kenner robocop stuff that's all flaking now yeah um uh, uh pd dev says a death star playset would be awesome uh full-blown katina that can cantina that would be cool uh add at we've already done an ad at though right we got the they did a legacy big amazing ad yeah. they did the legacy one and they did it again in two different vintage collection boxes yeah so i i think i think that one but uh who knows who knows all right, well, uh, th- I think that's a good spot for Star Wars. We'll have to see what happens. I feel like Star Wars has, a lot of, has lost a bit of its shine, but uh, maybe they'll bring some back with another HasLab set. All right, Hasbro Marvel panel. Uh, I feel, again, this one seems a little bit lighter because all the Marvel stuff has kind of been on pause in this COVID mm-hmm. world. Uh mm-hmm. So I think it leaves a lot of things just open to who knows, who knows how that's going to go. But, but what do you think there? It's really hard to say. Uh, the only thing I would think is, you know, they're putting out that Sentinel. I don't know what else they can do outside of releasing, you know, like a scaled blackbird jet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I really don't, I, I really don't know. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're they're digging deep for characters, and without, yep. like you said, without any MCU, you know, coming up. I mean, there there's been teases of that uh, Eternals figure, the Selma Hayek. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not they'll show the rest of the lineup, but that's going to give away so much. Yep. So, I think their hands are kind of tied. Yeah. You know, I, I think we're kind of seeing it with so little for Marvel. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure we'll get. But even Marvel Legends, like, is there anything left in Marvel Legends that we, or maybe something that needs to be updated? Yeah, I mean, they've talked about doing um, updated things. You know, I think that they need to do an updated Modoc, an updated Mojo. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've really done everything. Yeah, I don't I don't know what else they could do outside of. Here's my I got my pick ready. So, but you can just pick, and then I got my pick. I'm ready. Okay. Um, You better they, not. Said, they said, yeah, uh, you go. I got to think. <laughs> They're going to bring another. Maybe they've already said this. Rogue. <laughs> another rogue. <I> don't know. <laughs> they are supposed to. They were supposed oh, to do a best of X Men wave. <laughs> oh, a, a Fang Foom. Fang Fang Foom. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. They, they did say that there's a new uh, figure coming that's been done once in Toy Biz. And then there's going to be one that has never been done. So maybe maybe a new Galactus. Yeah, they did one for the the three and three quarter inch scale, right? But we yeah. did not get one. Yeah, yeah. that was great. But but they did the same thing with the Sentinel back for whenever the fan- new Fantastic Four comes out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm gonna say a new uh, Modok. Okay. That's what I, uh, that's we'll, my we'll guess. He's kind of with you on that one too. Yeah. They need to do Modoc. But that's uh, it. That's all they got. Wants the three and three quarter Marvel uh, figures back. They, you know, Hasbro just seems to not really want to do anything three three quarters. Like they were all in for a minute there. Um, but then, you know, petrol got really, really cheap. And mm-hmm. <laughs> now they can do these six. But yeah. I uh, hope they do a new blob fig. Oh yeah, that's right. Maybe because that that first blob figure, the build a figure, that thing's going for crazy money now. Yeah, that'd be a good one. That'd be a really good one. All right, uh, Tree Shaker, I want to pull back to the Star Wars thing because I think it's a really good call out here. I've been waiting for the ghosts from Rebels. Uh, that ship, that'd be great. Uh, but I think a sand crawler would be cool because of New Hope and the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah, a sand crawler. We've never gotten a like a proper sand crawler, right? Like a true. Nope. 
Not, not a good scale. No. Oh my God. That would be huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would like, be like that. But I don't know. It'd be so big. Because of, the, because of the shape of it, you could literally put your child inside of it. Yeah. <laughs> like it acts as like a storage compartment yeah. for all toys. If they could double it as like a stroller. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. Well, that's day one. I think uh, some great stuff there. Um, is what? Oh, Transformers is day two. Okay. I'm trying to think of what special guests we'll see. I guess D. Bradley Baker, uh, Ashley Eckstein. And uh, Kyle Newman, Matthew Lillard, and Joe Manganiello. Uh, I've met Matthew Lillard at Comic Con. Uh, he I've met him at a bar. Really nice guy. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, there's one bar that uh, we like to. Oops, I'm going up too high. That we like to hang out at. Uh, it's the Omni. If you're ever in San Diego Comic Con, there's a few spots. If you just want to like people watch and just run into a lot of celebrities, that one. A lot of the uh, studios put up. Uh, and Hard Rock uh, Hotel, as well as the Omni, because again, it's just across the street. So we like to go to the Omni bar, uh, you know, after panels and stuff. And uh, we uh, got to uh, see uh, George R. R. Martin take a few, uh, probably, uh, ladies of the night uh, up to his hotel room, uh, <laughs> because it was definitely not his wife. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, my buddy is a big Lord of the Rings fan. This is a few years ago, but even still, him not finishing the books, were like he's like, Quit doing that and finish your books as uh, as he walked by. But anyway, are you talking? You're talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, George R. R. Martin. Yeah, you, you said Lord of the Rings. Did I snap? Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. It's fine. Saturday is Sunday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, uh, <laughs> let's go on here. Uh, so day two, I feel like this is where the meat and potatoes is here. And again, mm -hmm. Star Wars on day one is huge. Marvel is huge, but. Uh, we're, we're kicking things off uh, with a G.I. Joe panel. What are your G.I. Joe predictions? A uh, classified vehicle. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. where, where do you think it's going to go? Um, probably a Hiss tank. If not a Hiss tank, uh, the Ram, the Ram motorcycle. Okay. Okay. I, I was thinking his tank or vamp for sure. Oh, yeah, maybe the vamp. So I'm going to say vamp. You'll say his tank. We'll split the yeah. difference. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a master order, more troopers. I agree. Can we have like a trooper like 20 pack? <laughs> yeah, I, I bet they do that. I bet they do that just like they did with the uh, the Hydra and the, the Hellfire uh, mm -hmm. trooper guys. You know, just put them in a plain box. For yeah, like 12 bucks. Exactly. They'll sell all day long. Um, but still, I, I think the G.I. Joe classify has been an absolute kind of surprise uh, hit uh, of the year and um, definitely has me excited. Where other years, I might not be that interested in whatever the G.I. Joe panel was, but I'm excited to see what they do here. Uh, Zartan and his Swamp Skimmer, the Chameleon. That's a great pick. Mm hmm. Yep. I got a feeling that'll end up being like an exclusive. Oh, God. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> It'd be another Baroness, man. No, I feel like it's I think they'll save it for like a San Diego of next year. Really? Yeah. Dang. I feel like, you know, Hasbro loves to do that, you know. But like a character like Zartan, really? Like i I like it better when it's more like a repaint, or maybe it's a figure that'll have a normal release and then they'll add something to it. Yeah. But I mean they always did that with black series. Yeah. You know, they they did that really good Jabba set mm -hmm. the, for San Diego. Yeah. They, I don't know. I think I think we're going to, you know, wait and see. But I might eat my words next week. Who knows? P-Dub says killer whale. Whew. Ugh. We're talking about expensive. Yeah. Keep <laughs> dreaming, PD. <laughs> uh, man says, I can't wait to do the Rattler. That's another one. That's going to be, I see. Yeah. Uh, Replica Snake Eyes Sword, like a Black Series Saber Plasma Series one. That'd be cool. So like a like a premium uh, prop replica. Yeah, I bet they'll do that. Yeah, but, I mean, because they've done it with uh, Star Wars. They've done it with Ghostbusters. Uh, my my uh, Neutrono one is finally shipping. <laughs> Even though now they're selling at GameStop for $15 cheaper. Oh, no. It's 86 but or Yeah, it's maybe it's $14 cheaper. It's 86 bucks. 
<laughs> but at least I get to buy it early on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Old School Shinobi says they need to give Snake Eyes a timber. I agree. Yeah, they do. They didn't do like a perfect Snake Eyes. Because again, I the, the last exclusive they did, I sold mine because I didn't like the way it looked. The normal Snake Eyes release is the best one. But they need to do one that's maybe more with the with the gray visor, but maybe the rest are all black. I don't know. Maybe something that's more in the same paint scheme. Give us a timber. Yeah. I think we'll also see the Alley Viper this weekend. Uh, when it comes to HasLab, you know the flag and the Defiant will be on topic. See, I even think in a HasLab world, they can never do the flag again. Mm-mm. Not, I mean, there's there's barely any life in, in four inch Joes outside of that retro wave right now. And I don't see that, you know, a six inch scale flag is impossible. You know, that's no. that yeah, wouldn't no. even be on the table or consider no, no, it has to be three, three quarter inch. Yeah. And they haven't re- to your point that that line's been dead for years now. Yeah. And then but the new retro ones that that, that started out with Snake Eyes. Yeah. And Storm Shadow and Baroness. You know, you, you see those figures selling online for retail. They're they're mm-hmm. not hot. They didn't take oh. off like like uh, classified. them as O-ring figures. Yeah. Come on. But yeah, there's just no way. That's I haven't. Well, I have my Super Seven Turtles there, which I guess is another haul. But there's no way they could do another USS flag. It's impossible. <laughs> um, I'm having this customized my own timber. Hey, PD Dubs, you've you've done great work before. I know you can do it. Uh, Master Hoarder says good point. All right, so there's our predictions on GI Joe. Yo Joe. All right, Transformers. Probably the biggest hitter of like pure Hasbro IP. Um, they revealed toy for third and final chapter of the War of Cybertron Trilogy Kingdom. Transformers Brain Hall of Fame. Okay, I feel bad because I don't really know Transformers these days. Do you, do you have any good ideas of what do you think? Uh, might um, be here? Yeah, well, the the Kingdom series that's going to be the addition of Beast Wars to what is currently happening in the Transformers, um, you know, mythos. Okay, so it's like from what I understand, it's going to be the like the older Beast Wars style updated a little bit. So, you know, Cheetor will look like Cheetor did, mm-hmm. but now in the uh, Cybertronian uh, style design mm-hmm. a little bit. Yep. Um, and if anybody has watched that, I don't know if you've watched that Netflix series, the new one. I have. It's, is it good? It is so good. And I am not a Transformers person. I don't, okay. even, I don't collect it. But if you just started watching this just out of nowhere, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a great, it's a great show, and it's okay. it's much more adult than okay. than your you know OG Transformers. All right. Um, but I, I can't say I have any predictions outside of they're adding um, some of the original Transformers movie characters into the um, movie series, the uh, studio series. Mm-hmm. Um, that stuff has been teased this week, and. Uh, yeah, that's that's really all I know. You know, the the kingdom is actually Beast Wars. Yep. And uh, the studio series is adding the original animated movie Transformers to the lineup. That'd be cool. That'd be really neat. I mean, we're getting John Cena from Bumblebee. Yeah, he was really good in Bumblebee. I, that was a really good movie. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it more than everything. You know, every live action Transformers movie so far. Yep, I agree. Um, one. It was, just, it was a fun story, very like ETS kind of story. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was just the the way they did the character designs. It was so like eighties. Yeah, they all looked amazing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't try as hard as the rest. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred percent. Tree Shaker. Tree Shaker says Beast Wars was my intro to Transformers, and I cannot wait. Uh, as people asked Speedy Dubs what he would do to make the timber. He said probably scrap a generic wolf toy and give it a paint deco. Um, I would like to see the studio series for the 86 movie. Yep. Yeah. That's what, that's what they're doing. Okay. There you go. I know. I know Grimlock is coming. Um, cup, um, hot rod. I think Cyclonus is coming. I can't remember who else. There was some leaked images this week, All right. but the, but some of them were mistransformed. Like they were whoever, you know, sent the product samples because there was a funny picture it was the the it was the bot on top of like a mailer box. Mm-hmm. You know, it was all it had like Japanese writing on it. And it was just like, you know, this is a sort of mistransformed. This is what cup is going to look like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Well, we did have uh, that leak from uh, what was it, a couple of episodes ago. Yes, the arc. The arc as well. So maybe we'll see that. Maybe. You're gonna be the one that saves me. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on here. The Ghostbusters panel. This panel is stacked. This is up your alley. Uh, so first up, it's in three parts. Classic Ghostbusters, making of the Ken and Real Ghostbusters toys, and then Ghostbusters Afterlife. So to me, I'm kind of reading it as like Plasma Series, Kenner Classics, and then the, whatever they're doing for Ghostbusters Afterlife, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so first part, you have Ernie Hudson and the Hasbro Ghostbusters team. They're going to celebrate the iconic 84 film, tune in for Ghost Prize, classic toy news, and a visit from a very special guest, Ernie Hudson, otherwise known as Winston Zedmore from Ghostbusters. Get ready to hear him answer your fan questions. So the first wave of Plasma series, you got all the core Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. Gozer and uh, Dana Barrett. And then with this uh, con exclusives, you're getting Louis Tully uh, with Terror Dog. So that 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 really completes the lineup from the first movie, aside from ghosts. Yeah. So I could say you go Slimer, Janine, maybe. But I think, but they're saying celebrate the classic eighty four movie. But I would love to see some Ghostbusters two stuff in there. Yeah. I I love Ghostbusters two. We just watched that today with my son. Would love to see some stuff there. So we'll we'll see. Uh, Plasma Trap or Plasma Ecto one, or real Ghostbusters Ecto one remake. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, I absolutely think a trap would be great, a, a replica trap. And if they really want to make me like salivate a pack, but I don't know, it, but I really wanted to do that. <laughs> um, the next up here is the making of the Kenner real Ghostbuster toys. So we're getting more of these. We're getting more of the Kenner classics, which is crazy. I didn't think I... Over under there, I wasn't 100 guarantee we get more of the vintage style mm-hmm. uh, classics figures, but we got Mark Bordeaux, Hasbro Ghostbusters brand team. We'll continue our journey through the 80s with an inside look of the making of the real Ghostbusters toys from the original Kenner toy designer Mark Bordeaux. Next, we'll see behind the scenes sculpting with Dave. Finally, meet the Hasbro team that relaunched the Kenner real Ghostbusters toys in 2020. Hear about how they answered the call to bring this beloved toy back for fans to be the first to see the next Kenner real Ghostbusters toys to hit shelves now you and i talked about we kind of did some predictions on this mm-hmm. one of our earlier episodes when we talked about uh you know uh, toy companies bringing back toy lines or rebooting toy lines and i, th- I remind me of what you picked out i I'm, I'm trying to remember um i picked the firehouse that's right yep because it's not it's not a super detailed playset, you know. If they stuck with the original one, you know, it it really has three moving parts: the doors, you know, each door, and the pole. That you know, that's that's it. And everything is, you know, there's no battery powered anything. It would be an economical toy for for Hasbro to make. Yep. You know, at you know, it it would be a higher price point, but it's not. You know, I don't think it's out of you know you know, out of the uh, option of being made because mm-hmm. how basic it is. And mm-hmm. when you look at the assembled version of it, it's like four panels of plastic for the walls, mm-hmm. and, you know, the, the roof, the floor, the doors, it's, you know, the railings, it's not very, you know, it's not very complicated to make. Yeah. I'm going to wait and see, I guess, but I, I do agree. I, I think that would be really cool. I think it would be really expensive, but I think it'd be really mm-hmm. cool. I forgot to share this earlier. I got this sweet uh, enamel pin from the Toy Saurus guys. Um, oh, whoa. That's awesome. Made to look like the Kenner Firehouse. So I would love a Kenner Fire. I think that'd be great. But I think the more likely, if they do a vehicle, will be Ecto-1. I, mm-hmm. I really have a feeling they're going to make the Ecto-1 and bring it back. Um, but but man, it's just wishful thinking. But... I think we even talked about how uh, fright features the original. It would probably be too difficult just because of all the moving parts. It'd be really cool. Yeah, more complicated toy. So I agree with PD Dubs here. I think we're gonna get Ecto Glow reissues, mm-hmm. or maybe they'll go Slimed Heroes or Power Pack Heroes later in the line when they kind of just started re rehashing, repainting the old sculpts. That would be the safe pick. 
but the the stretch pick i think is the ecto one them re-releasing the ecto one uh tree shaker says mark bordeaux is a, a or boudreau uh is a boss met him at celebration he was to, uh he and we as toy fans owe him everything super cool dude that's great that's awesome uh you know our heroes are good peeps uh ross says they won't reissue the firehouse i, I think it's a stretch but I'm not totally shutting it down. I think it's a, it, so you're telling me there's a chance. I feel like <laughs> it's, uh, I feel like a good pick for you. Uh, I love to see the later stuff redone. Ecto glow, terror tongue, bomber ghost. Um, yeah, I think Ecto glow would be really cool just because on, it's one of those. They're not insanely rare. Like you can buy package examples. Cause I think a lot of warehouse finds uh, kind of flooded the market on those. They didn't hit retail as much back then, but I think a lot were made. But it's one of those lines where it's you, it's very hard to find them loose, very hard to find them complete because most people found them in boxes and people are less inclined to open those things up. And basically, it's really the only way you can get like complete, nice looking ones. So it'd be cool if they re-release the Ecto Glows to kind of give us a chance to have a lot of them open boxed, which would be cool. Um, I, I have I have all the figures, but I... And I have two with the proton packs and their ghosts, but no masks. Uh, and two and three of them without any accessories. And that's from 30 years of collecting Ghostbusters action figures. Now, again, I guess it could be more like just pay everything, whatever, on eBay. But that's just trying to find them in the wild. That's what I have found of 30 years of collecting. And I never found them at retail as a kid. Never saw them. So that'd be really cool if they did Ecto Glow. Uh, Firehouse was such a good design that I noticed my original Rescue Heroes tower is designed in the same format. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's another one of those. Mm -hmm. Kenner just does it really well. They set the standards. Uh, PD Dub says you cannot have too many Ecto-1. <laughs> I'm so excited for whenever the Fright features or Ghostbusters Afterlife version comes out because it looks awesome. And uh, I hope Henry Golding isn't just there for a cameo at last. Uh, like salutes or cheers to fans. I'm hoping he can at least do something important. Um... Henry Golding. Am I missing something out there? I, I don't know who that is. I don't know either. Maybe I missed that on here. Um, all right. And then last but not least, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Jason Reitman and the Ghostbusters brand team. Well, in our celebration of the Nod of the Future, the new Ghostbusters Afterlife feature film coming in March 2021. We'll see. Um, <laughs> the one that was used in the new film. That's pretty cool. And in its early, an exciting reveal. You'll then hear from the Hazard team about the next toy inspired by the Ghostbusters Afterlife film to hit show. So, We've only gotten the uh, this this Spangler's Neutrona one. That's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently the film's going to be coming out in March, even though the Sony studio head keeps alluding to maybe it's going to get pushed back. But still, I, I think if if they're doing another prop, I think Ghost Trap's a good one to go with. Or maybe, I don't know, they had that grenade thing or something, maybe some other thing, tool that they made up for this movie. But I would really like to see some figures or just something. But, you know, if they're not going to try and spoil us, we probably won't get to see it. Uh, what's your favorite ghost boys? I like my favorite ghost or like ghost boy. I don't like know. from the uh, original Ghostbusters movie or the toys? If it's toys, mm, bug eye ghosts and H2O ghosts were always faves. Like that first wave of ghosts, bug eye ghosts, H2O ghosts, bad to the bone. Um, and then the Gooper ghosts. I always, I always love those. You know, uh, snap. That's right. Uh, that's social Shinobi. Unknown, unknown. I want the wave two kind of ghosts to include haunted humans. I need to complete them this time. Haunted humans line is great, but again, all those ones are like little action features. I feel like that's. I don't know if they want to do that kind of lift, but maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I never thought they would do re-release the first series figures again. I didn't think it would make it past that first series. So I'm wrong on so many levels on these. I'm excited to see whatever they drop because, you know, if you watch this channel, it's more than likely came to this channel because you watched a Ghostbuster video at some point in time. So, you know, I love it. I'm down for whatever. Uh, Snake Eyes 2020 on my back. Oh. 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 Duh. Right there. <clears throat> my bad. Uh, that's right. I guess, yeah, we will get some more uh, uh, details there on that movie. I'm excited for the movie uh, figures for that. But that's the Ghostbusters panel. Looks like we're getting a lot of stuff there. I'm really excited about it. Uh, all right, Power Rangers. You know, what's for me, it's all about uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I know it goes a lot farther than that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, join us for Power Rangers brand panel featuring my, uh, more phenomenal news and brand announcements across the new Power Rangers product. Be the first to see new Power Rangers Lightning Collection and other products yet to hit shelves, as well as a sneak peek for upcoming items. All this exciting news will be followed by a Q&A with the design, sculpting, creative, and marketing teams for Hasbro. Go, go, Power Rangers. Not really any clues there. Uh, what's your thoughts? Um, I think they're going to show us, uh, you know, obviously whatever's coming off of the Lightning Collection. But I think Hasbro will finally, um, we'll see what they're doing with the Megazord outside of yes. the current, current Power Rangers lineups. Yep. I think they go back and tackle you know maybe the, the shogun megazord because the uh the legacy collection had handled you know the the regular original megazord the dragon zord the thunder zord still, assault team that's still bandai though yeah that's but that's what i'm saying is there's yeah. been so many iterations of updated versions mm -hmm. where i think if if Hasbro went and and did another like original mighty morphin megazord mm -hmm. like it wouldn't be you know, it's it, it won't go over well. You know, we need to see something past that that Bandai didn't get to to do again. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if they did a Shogun or any of the sp Megazords from uh, in space, you know, the Astro or the Delta, those those Megazords, the Bandai ones are fantastic. They mm -hmm. they've held up really well. But I think one thing that's good for them is you know some of the diecast pieces on them. You know, that makes the Megazord so so like chunky and heavy, and they just feel, you know they feel almost dangerous when you're swinging them around in your hand because they weigh, they weigh a couple pounds. You yep. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but they, they're so popular with fans now mm -hmm. where they're, they're super hard to find currently like complete, you know, for like mm -hmm. an Astro Megazord, they're like 150 to $200 right yeah. now, you know, no box, but complete. So I think if, if Hasbro went back to, um, after Mighty Morphin, like Zeo mm -hmm. forward, I wanted that's what I want to see. Yeah, but, but Megazords. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, I, I just any any kind of Megazords, I think would be great. And mm -hmm. maybe some you know Black Series level props. Again, you're right. Like it's been done so many times. Like Bandai just did a lot of these things, but I'd like to see Hasbro's take on it. Just like I've really dug their take through the Lightning Collection. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think I do think you're right there. But for me, I haven't bought any of the most recent uh, Megazords or anything like that. So I would be cool if it was just Mighty Morphin Megazords. But to your point, John, focus on something that hasn't really been done in a long time. Yeah, a great idea. Um, let's see, uh, LC uh, MM Power Rangers from the '95 movie. That'd be cool. So the the movie style that'd be dope. That'd be really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, let's get a prestige line with collector's zords. We just got an MMPR Mega Zord, but need a collector edition. That's I kind of that's what I kind of feel like something nice, something yeah more premium would be really cool. Uh, Nightmare ten eighty eight zero or ten eight hundred and eighty or ten eighty eight zero. <laughs> Nightmare that one hundred eight eighty <laughs> Zio Mega Zord that was released and then pulled off websites a couple weeks ago. So there you I go. did see that. Yeah, I did see that. A little bit of a tease. I want Hasbro to do their own version of the Zords. They do Transformers. Imagine how Hasbro could improve on them. I agree. So mm -hmm. I I do get it. They've, there's been a bajillion MMPR Zords. But I'd, I'd still like to see them do it. Like Masterpiece Editions. Exactly. Exactly. Bring Tommy in on it. <laughs> Some joint effort here. Re yeah, that would really tick off Bandai. <laughs> um... All right. Well, th there you go. That that wraps it up for all of the stuff there. Uh, again, tons of guests, which is great. Musical guests, Fallout Boy, Tenacious D, and Lights. That's the Lights. I don't know who Lights is, but Tenacious D, one of my favorite bands of all time. And Fallout Boy, I was probably a little too old for when like that really hit and everybody loved them, but they're still, they're still a good uh, kind of pop rock band. And Jackie Jennings, I don't know her, but she seems really fun from, uh, you know, all the stuff she's done so far. Um, mm. So I'm sure she'll be a great host. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's going to be great. And uh, for questions, uh, it'll be streamed on their YouTube page, youtube.com slash Hasbro Pulse. And uh, yeah, it'll be really, really cool. Um, and again... At 12 p.m., early access for Hasbro Pulse premium members. They're limiting 
one per customer, which hopefully it'll they stick to it. One. Well, fingers crossed. We'll see. It's not a NECA release, so we might have a chance. Um, and then the next day on that Thursday at noon, open to all fans. Again, I, I hope, I hope uh, we're going to, and we'll stop sharing here. Uh, I, I hope they're going to be staggering those releases so that everybody gets a chance. Either way, should be a fantastic week of geekery in the toy form. And again, kudos uh, to Hasbro for putting this all together. It's, it doesn't seem half-baked. Uh, no. Going all out. They're putting really high production value into this. And I think it's really cool. I think it's really, really cool. Because again, usually they'll just kind of show up at a Comic Con or Power Con, or you know, they don't do Power Con, but still something like that or toy. Mm -hmm. But this time they're doing it themselves. I think it's really cool. Just hopefully it doesn't mean that now they're just going to always do it themselves and not even like play with anybody else. But right. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, old school Shinobi, we need a 40th anniversary Raise Lost Ark Indiana Jones next year. That'd be great. That would be more troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Marina Shakan, new trailer for WandaVision. Um, maybe this Pulse uh, con will persuade me to buy Pulse for the season. We'll see. I, I you, uh, I, I, I think last week or week before I lamented yeah. paying the 50 bucks, but didn't maybe, give it a very good endorsement. No, I. Mm, mm, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, not, but, but we can't blame you. Right. Anyway, go back and catch up and, and listen to yeah. Jay's rant on <laughs> on Pulse. All right, so let's let's quickly do this last thing here. We're we're already over time. We we just had too much stuff to talk about today. But you know, and this wasn't the original intention. But so much stuff dropped in regards to Masters of the Universe this past week, and uh, so we we definitely needed to talk about it. Uh, before you know this show ends uh but one earlier this week leaked images of the masters of the universe origins castle gray skull now we only got apparently now we don't know for sure so this is still kind of it's not official yet mm -hmm. but this uh, is the inside we don't see what the outside looks like yet so yeah thoughts thoughts here john i think it looks good you know it's it's sort of a um you know, a cross between the classics version and uh, yep. the original. Mm -hmm. um, I do like how they widen the ladder. It makes a little bit more sense because, you know, figures are a little bit wider. <laughs> and I notice how the, the floor on the castle is raised up a little bit. Yep. Um, it doesn't actually sit against the, the floor as it's mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. So I wonder if that means we're getting like additional floor pieces, sort yes. of like uh, the classics version that can, yes. you know, extend the play set. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting a Temple of Darkness Sorceress included with it. I know. Although, yeah. who put the battle trainer up top? I know. What, what, <laughs> what's cool? Did that. Um, so, yeah, things I like. Uh, I love. It looks like the ladder. Uh, even the, the floors look pretty solid. Um, the computer is, like, real. It's not a piece of paper. The throne looks pretty cool. A little bit more done up. Um, I agree. Like the raised floor, like, will there be extensions that can be added to it? That would be amazing. Something that was kind of cool about the 2000 X version was it's kind of modular ability, like being able to add like mm -hmm. set to it and stuff like that. So that'd be cool. Um, things that have me a little bit concerned is, uh, just the way that edge looks like with where the, the laser cannon is kind of on. It looks really thin right there. Um, yeah, you can see that it looks super thin. So I don't know if they're like going to, like it looks fine from a distance or like maybe you're looking at straight on from the front or from the back, but it doesn't seem like it comes in or is as deep as the vintage one was, but right. it, it's a very grainy image. Who knows? But that's, I guess be my only concern. And again, we don't know what the actual front looks like yet, but from the inside, I think the inside looks pretty good. From what we've mm -hmm. seen. Yeah. I think it looks good. And uh, it looks like it's going to retail for about a hundred bucks. If you uh, go on Planet Eternia and the the site that they stole it from has the the store uh, order form, and uh, it was eighty nine ninety nine euros, so about a hundred dollars. Boom. 
yeah. So I, I think price point looks good. Everything in there looks good, but I definitely need to see better pictures that aren't grainy leaked images. But still, exciting stuff because even at PowerCon, they're very non-committal. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're a bit more committal than than. <laughs> <laughs> and and it said release for early 2021. So yeah. I I'm kind of assuming this is going to be a Christmas uh, item this year. You think so? Then yeah. why don't that show it at PowerCon then? They like to surprise, you know. I, I think I think just time. Mattel likes to just throw things out there randomly. They they kind of did the same thing with um, classics towards yep. towards the end, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and even with this origin stuff, you know, they, they've leaked ish, they've leaked pictures yeah. the entire year. Yep. You know, the first time we saw, uh, Manny faces, it just showed up randomly on like uh, mm-hmm. toy news, uh, somewhere. Um, all right. Just quickly, Chad Phoenix Richardson said, shoot, I'm late to the party guys. Did I miss the beating up on Hasbro part yet? Uh, yes. <laughs> Phoenix, uh, but luckily, uh, you can either listen to the podcast, check it out on iTunes, toy geeks, or again, this show post right after you can scrub it and, go back to the other parts um <laughs> old school shinobi sticking to his new exclamation Skull Skull Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> master order says hope it's not a target exclusive at first again i hope so as well but we'll see uh good call here what's behind the ladder yeah what is that little thing back there it looks like a little shelf like right? um like for shields oh, maybe so that original piece of paper that was the little also like kind of additional weapons holder yeah, like a, another weapons rack, I'm assuming. Yeah, because that was another piece to the... You know what's missing here, though, is we don't have the spacesuit. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's no spacesuit robot in the corner. Maybe that'll be an exclusive figure at some point. Oh, yeah, um, probably. <laughs> Mariano says, thanks for the show heading out. Good night. Good night, Mariano. Good night, Mariano. Uh, I thought it was $79 at Target. Whew. Yeah. I don't know. We'll Whoa. see. All right, next thing here. We got some first box images of two figures they didn't really talk about. You get to your point, uh, they kind of accidentally, uh, not really, it was on the back of the figure, but they didn't actually explicitly say these were coming for 2021. Mm-hmm. But one, uh, Zodak looks great. I love yeah. him. He's one of my favorites. And this one looks fantastic. Yep. Looks just like the original. If not better, like it looks crisper. Mm-hmm. It looks really good. His uh, The chest logo that almost W looking mm-hmm. uh, white logo. It looks a little sharpened up. Yep. It's not so wide as the original and it says new for 2021. I just noticed that. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you know what that armor looked great on one jar. <laughs> He's happen. coming. I imagine. Right. Uh, and then also Shira, the most powerful woman in the universe. Mm hmm. I got and- the power con exclusive whenever that one's going to come in the mail. Yeah, people are people are upset. Why are they upset? Because they paid. Wasn't she like fifty dollars? Oh yeah, but I won't there be cooler things here than this one? I don't know. I, I think people are just upset. Like, all right, now the, by the time you get that Shira, you could prop maybe get this Shira first. The, yeah. this one that's coming out. You know, maybe the box and everything will be really cool. I, <laughs> I agree, but whatever. I, I don't know. Make go. I don't know. We'll see. All right, last bit of things here on the Masters of the Universe. <laughs> also, it's going to be my boy Zodak. Yeah, Zodak is D O P E. All right, uh, last bit. Now, this, I feel like I got to take a huge grain of salt here. So, at PowerCon, big surprise, they announced a new seven inch scale collector line, Masters of the Universe, Masterverse line. Mm-hmm. Looks like again, they just kind of saw slightly images, and Moss Man was on the packaging. So that was the first reveal there. So we're getting a Moss Man. And then this image starts circulating on the internet. And I don't think it's real. I think think it's real. You think it's real? Yeah. It looks like Mm -hmm. a custom to me. I mean, it is, but it's also just, it's art. It's just a painting. Like, you can tell that's not a figure. Really? It looks like a custom-made figure to me. You think it's a painting? Yeah, I think that, I think that's just a drawing. So... I mean the 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 same site that leaked this is the same site that's leaked everything so far that's worked out. You mm-hmm. know, everything that's panned out so far. And it also has the Mattel watermark on it. Yep. You can add that. You can make that up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but there's 
but see, because um, if if we hadn't seen that the box art that they showed first was Moss Man for this new mm-hmm. Masterverse series, I would say, you know, I would say it's probably not legit. But it, the silhouette matches, you know, if they did fake this, it looks pretty good. <laughs> you know, somebody designed did well mm-hmm. um, to try and figure out what that silhouette could possibly look like. And they said that the body of it would look similar to classics and it has yeah. the same ab crunch cut as classics. Mm-hmm. So I think it's real. My I'm throwing my hat in the ring on this guy. Okay. Okay. I'll take the other side. I'm going to say it's fake, but okay. I, I, not, I, I think it looks cool. I think it's really cool. So I'm not like saying I hate it, but I'm mm-hmm. going to say it's fake. I and, like it. If it's real, he looks very, yeah. you know, his his foot, one of his feet looks like a tree root. Yep. You know, he's a little bit more um, swamp thingy, sort yep. of. Mm-hmm. I think uh, old school Shinobi said that looks like an Elseworld swamp thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like it. Says, I say that Mass Man is real. You guys like? It? I think it, I like it. I just don't. I'm. I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of a skeptic here. I think it's fake. But John thinks it's real. We're split, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll see who's right in the end. Uh, we'll I'm find out next year. Yeah, but I'm gonna be like a whiny fan. I, I think it looks really great. I just like I, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust it. it. Doesn't look real to me in my eyes. But I would trust you more, John, since you are like an actual <laughs> figure sculptor and know it a lot. If better. it's if it is real, this would be the first Moss Man that's not based off of Beast Man, off the same oh, body. Oh, good call. Well, may, we don't know. Maybe the Beast Man is. We haven't seen. It <laughs> Maybe Beast Man has a tree leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, uh, speaking of, and this is uh, we don't we don't have a date locked in yet, but he's down to come on the show. Big so uh, hopefully. We'll, we'll ho- we've been going back and forth, but maybe, maybe the, the first episode following all our Hasbro con stuff. So October 4th this is like a tentative. Hopefully by next week, we'll have it locked in, but October 4th tentatively, but at least sometime in October, one of our episodes, the toy guru, Scott, Scott Knightlick is going to be coming on the show and hanging out with John and I to talk masters of the universe. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. Big fan of what he accomplished with the masters of the universe class. Mm-hmm. Um, and be be really stoked to talk to him about that. Talk about the action fin- industry as it is right now, and what he thinks of the Motu Origins. So, uh, really pumped to have him, our first guest. Really excited yeah. for Toy Guru. That's a big first guest yeah. for, for two schlubs like John and I. So <laughs> excited to have him uh, come on the show. Uh, so I think again, we're trying to lock it in right now, but maybe October fourth at nine. Uh, we'll hopefully have that date confirmed and locked in by uh, our next episode on Friday or Saturday. Okay. On that note, I think that's a good place that's to it. close it out today, John. Uh, yep. A lot of stuff happening this week. We'll see which of our predictions were right. And uh, I don't know what we're, we didn't wager anything. We probably should have, but uh, I mean, I'll, I'll buy you a beer or something or a bourbon. I'll buy you. Yeah. A beer, All right. Uh, if you're right. Um, and if and- you're right, an old fashioned. Boom. Done. Done. Sounds like a plan. Uh, once bars open back up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that'll do it for this episode of Toy Geeks. Uh, we are here Sundays at 9 o'clock on YouTube.com slash Geek Dad Life. Uh, also, we are on a podcast form as well on wherever you can download podcasts. So you can listen to the audio form of that as well. Uh, we do have a few emails. We ran out of time today. Um, so, John, hopefully uh, next time we will, we will get to those. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. But still send those in to toygeekshow at gmail.com. And uh, until next time, hasta luego. And goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>